consider I'm taking a Gmail account. I just logging into the Gmail. Okay. So here I'll be having a particular front end. So I'll just tell you what are the technologies we use and for what reason. Okay. So mm -hmm. in this front end you will be having two text box and a button. So that is username and password and one is for like submit login. Yeah. So these are nothing but you can say front end. This is front end. Sorry, what are you saying? Front end. Front end. And okay. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And for this <coughs> development of front end, we use HTML dot CSS cascading style sheet dot JS for validation and dot mm -hmm. jQuery. All these languages will be used. Okay. So these mm -hmm. are HTML well, yeah. front end. Okay. And now these values must be stored inside a database. Okay. So that database, like I say, we have a database. And this is known as backend. So yeah. what are the backend technologies? <coughs> Nothing but Oracle. This Oracle consists of SQL and PLSQL again. Okay, so we just say it as Oracle. And mm -hmm. MySQL is there. SQL Server is there. MangoDB is there. Like this, lot of databases are there. So we are using few of them. Okay. Yeah, okay. So what is database means? It's a storage area. Like mm -hmm. in our home, we have a storeroom. What we do in the storeroom? We store the things which we require for future or what are the things which are unnecessary for now, but we might uh, make it yeah. useful in the future, right? Yeah. The same way here, database stores the data. <coughs> So here, at the time of registration, whatever the username, password, the address, the age, whatever you have given, all this data will be stored in the database. Mm -hmm. So right. how they store and how they retrieve, for that, they required a web technology. They take the help of a web technology. Okay. So this you can say it as a web container, which contains all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have a web server. You heard about web server, right? Like a server which interacts with the printer. Yeah. And we have one more technology known as server side technology. server side technology. Okay. So whenever you give the values like username and password, suppose I'm giving some X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and I just want to log in now. Okay. So these yeah. values will be taken by the web server. Means here whatever the web server is there, will take all the values from the front end. Okay. This web server cannot interact with the database directly. Web okay. server can handle only static requests. Means, there are two types of pages. One is static page, another thing is dynamic page. Okay. Like in a front end I am saying. What is static page means? Suppose consider your university website is there. In that contact us will be there. That contact us will be same 
every time you click that link means it doesn't change right so those are known as static pages static pages which doesn't change on request and the dynamic page is nothing but like your result when you enter the hall ticket number based upon the hall ticket number the result page will be generated so for every particular student the result will be different right yeah. that is yeah. dynamic page <coughs> yeah. so this uh, web server cannot interact with the dynamic pages cannot develop the dynamic pages that's the reason we take the help of server side technology so all the values are again taken by server side technology okay so what are the server side technologies we have means we have java in which we use servlets and jhp for the basic part and we have dot net we use asp dot net and adio dot net and we have php so these are all server side technologies the result is same but the standards are different that's it okay and okay. these server side technologies interact with the database and what are the database is giving they will generate a dynamic page the dynamic page will be given to the web server <coughs> Sorry, can you repeat it a little bit because uh, voice was cut. Yeah, the last thing, but the server side technologies will interact with mm -hmm. the database, and whatever the mm -hmm. database values it is giving, based on the values it will generate a dynamic page. Okay. Here, you can say dynamic page, and this dynamic page is given to the web server. And web server gives this page to the front end. Till now it's clear. Yeah. So why we require database to store the data from the front end? So basically, everywhere like each and every website requires a database. Without database, you can't store any data. It's mandatory for a website. Okay. Yes. Next, already we had MS Excel. MS Excel, you know, right? Yes. Yeah. So, if we have MS Excel where the data is stored, then why we need a database? Previously, they used to interact with MS Excel itself, but there are some drawbacks in MS Excel. What are the drawbacks you can say? It is limited to a particular system. Like if you are having that file in your present system, you cannot access from anywhere else. That's the first drawback. It is limited to a particular system. And there is no security for that. Means anyone accessing your system can access the MS access file, MS Excel file. Again, he can take that particular data. There's a second reason. And the third is nothing but if your system crashes, like uh, you have to format your system and you don't have a backup. So there is no possible way of getting a backup for a MS Excel file. These are the three drawbacks <coughs> of MS Excel. To overcome that, we are using a database. So database can be accessed from anywhere. Because your Gmail account, you can access it from any particular website, Gmail website, right? Anywhere. Yeah. And next, there is a security for the database. Username and password will be there. Without that username and password, you cannot enter into the database. <clears throat> and every time there will be a backup for the SQL. So for the SQL part, you have a backup like for the database every time there will be a backup at the server side okay these are the scenarios and if you see 
we have a database means we have we need to store the data and we store the data in the form of rows and columns so suppose consider i am having a table here now. what is the table so here we have a table and this table consists of some three columns you can see So whatever the database is there, it stores in the form of rows and columns in the table format itself, right? But here it's yeah. not a like a GUI, graphical user interface will not be there. What is it? GUI. What do you mean GUI? Suppose in MS Excel or here you can see that new is there, open, save, all these options are there. Based on that you can edit it, right? But yeah. database that doesn't have any options like that. It's a storage area where if you want to store anything, we use SQL commands. What is that commands? SQL. What is SQL means? Structured query language. Means you have to store the data. So you have to write a command understood what is SQL yeah SQL means what structure query language. language okay query language means I am asking you to go and on the switch of a fan so what you will do you will go and on the switch of the fan the same way here if you want to create a table then we use the commands known as DDL data the definition language. language data definition language to create a table okay. come again are you mm -hmm. under, are you able to understand yeah, yeah actually the voice, voice is cracking so that's when we, are, we had a hard time to understand but that's okay we can uh, understand what you do sometimes a little bit disturbing. That's okay. Yeah, now can you hear properly? Just shift it to the Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. So here, when you want to create a table, we use a create command, right? So while creating what you create, you create a table name. I'm having the employee. Along with the table, you should have the column, right? ID, yeah. name, and you okay. should have some salary. But what is this ID? It stores numbers or characters. What is this name? It stores numbers or characters? Characters, right? Yeah. Yep. So, we have to specify what type of data you are trying to store at the time of create creating a table itself okay. so here while creating the ID it will be integer or number you can see mm -hmm. the name will be a character and yeah. salary will be again of number right yeah now after creating the table in some organizations, the ID might be alphanumeric. Alphanumeric means numbers and characters, mm -hmm. right? But I have declared it as number. So what is the first requirement? I want to change the particular data type, modify it. So whatever the task you want to perform on a table column, on the table column itself, we use a command known as alter. There is a command known as what? Alter. Alt. So what alter will be doing here? First thing what I want? I want that ID number to be changed to ID where like alphanumeric type, right? Yeah. So I'll just say alter modify <coughs> to modify the data type. That's the reason we use the modify. 
you understood till now what is modify yeah fine now after modifying there are only three columns id name and salary but i want one more column like address or that you can say i want a column for the address you can say so it is address what will happen you have to write a command you are modifying so again you will say add so this alter add will add a particular column to the database table mm -hmm. so column has been added now here you can see id is there but id doesn't specify like is it for employee or is it for student so i want to change that id to emp id like id once we change it to emp id so we use a command known as rename so this alter mm -hmm. command will work only on the column okay understood and yeah. after also, the, also, also we are going to use every time on the pardon come like on all the commands will start from alter yes here for modify you yeah. have to use alter for add you have to use alter for rename also you have to use alter itself okay 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 got it now okay. and now after this like i want to remove the address column or any column Mm -hmm. So you use drop command. Okay. So if I want to remove any particular column, then we use this drop. Okay. 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 So yeah. this will be scenario. And after this, this is for the column. The alter options will work entirely for the column. But suppose this EMP is there. That EMP, I want to change it to employee. So the table Sorry, name what must be changed. Sorry, what did you say? Alter will work only for the column, you said? Yes. So here only for the table, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, okay. only for the no. table column it will work. Okay. Okay. You mean not for the rows? That's what you mean? Yes, yes. Not for the rows. Okay. Only for the these particular column names. I mean, column is like a vertical, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Fine. And here, if I want to change that particular employee EMP to employee, yeah. we have to rename again. So there is a difference here. this rename is applicable for the table and when you use a rename along with alter it is applicable for the column. the column column yeah okay fine that's the difference and after this if you see if you want to drop the entire table along with the like rows and columns then we have to use a command known as drop okay what is the command drop drop so this ddl works on the table structure itself means table name along with the columns itself it doesn't work on the rows if you want to store okay. anything on the rows we use a particular command known as dml Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Data so manipulation you... language. Manipulating means you are manipulating the data. Okay. Okay. Now, if you yeah. see, there is no in row inserted. There is only columns created. If you want to insert a row, then we use a command known as insert. Mm -hmm. In this also, I can have only all column like all rows three rows inserting at once or particularly id and salary i want to insert 
सो वॉट इज इट ऑल रोज इंसर्शन और पर्टिकुलर रो इंसर्शन विल बी देर इन साइड द इंसर्ट मीन्स डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ राइटिंग दमैंड राइट Till now it's clear. No, I'm confused actually. You said DDL is only for the column, right? Right. Okay. Column in the sense here, the table name and the column, whatever the work you want to do, modify, alter them, we use DDL commands itself. And after that, if I want a value, like here, I want saying that one zero two three. Shiva and some twelve thousand, twelve hundred salary. So what's happening here? This row will be inserted when you use a command insert. That is data manipulation. And this data manipulation will work only on the rows, not on the columns, not on the table. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Now after insertion, if you see here that the salary is twelve thousand, but actually it was eighteen thousand, and I given it wrong by twelve thousand, right? So if you want to modify mm -hmm. the inserted row, so you have to use a command known as update. What's the command? Update. To change the particular twelve thousand row value to eighteen thousand. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after this, suppose an employee has resigned. So if an employee resigns, then we delete his data. So what you can say? Delete. From that particular table. So what do you use? Delete command, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have some thousand records in a table, employee table. I have some thousand records, and all these thousand records, I want to like see them. So how to view them or how to see them means we use a command known as select. What is the command? Select. So when you write the select, all the particular details will be seen from the database. And here, if you want particular row to be displayed, you can display that particular row. If you want to display the particular, delete the particular row, also you can delete. Update the particular row, also you can update. So you have to consider that. But you must still be only for the column. No, it's for the rows. Sorry. Yes, for the rows only. Here, ID, name, yeah, and salary yeah. you can't change anything by using DML commands. But whatever yeah. the things you yeah. have in the rows, you can modify. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I have a question. Yeah. Like in Excel, we have a address to particular cell, right? Yeah. But over here, like. Yeah. Suppose the number of columns are ten, okay, and there is twelve thousand repeated twice in one row, right? Twelve thousand, and we want to change twice in any particular row. Okay, okay. Let's suppose for Shiva, twelve thousand coming in uh, in I would say in any other column named uh, yeah allowances so, or anything. So we want to update only. The salary column again, because this was actually eighteen thousand. Yeah. But the allowances will remain twelve thousand. So right. how we can update that particular cell rather where than condition? Well, can you use? There's a okay. syntax known as where condition. Once, uh, like where the IDs ID will be different for every employee, right? Yeah. Even though the name is same, the salary is same. There might mm -hmm. be a different ID, so where ID you will give this command one zero two. Mm -hmm. When you give this thing, when this ID matches one zero two three, at that record you can update the twelve thousand to eighteen thousand. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Understood. Yep. So here, that's the scenario you have to follow. Till now, it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. It's clear. So just I've discussed what command we have to use at what scenario. Okay. Yeah. And uh, once we start the classes. Like these are only two commands, DDL, DML, and we have uh, DCL also and uh, TCL also. DCL is nothing but data control language. TCL is nothing but transaction control language. So DCL, we have commit rollback. So what is this commit and rollback and uh, transaction control language is nothing but grant and revoke. This will be clear when you when I show you the example like live examples if I show you then you will understand okay. So okay. once we start the classes we can discuss about data control language and TCL transaction control language. Fine. All right. Yeah. So uh, these are the things I wanted to say and we have a lot of rules first of all what are the rules in SQL it's a structured query language so once you create then only you can insert so you have to follow that order once you insert it then only you can update or delete or select so without inserting you cannot update or you cannot delete right yeah, that's those are the basic things you have to understand and SQL is very easy compared with any other language. But the only difference will be the commands will be similar. Like here rename is there, here rename is there. Like which rename at what time? This is for alter. So confusion will be more. And a lot of commands will be there. So how to remember them for a longer time, longer period of time, that will be the scenario. Okay? Understood. Yeah. Well, I have one question. Yeah. Like SQLs work at the back end, right? Yes. So for any particular software or any particular system, when we have already front end available for changing these kind of stuff, like for inserting any row, inserting any information, changing any information to the database. Okay. So why we actually need SQL in this scenario? When you use the front end, inside that query will be written, right? Without knowing yeah. the query, like a way to change and how to change, you can't understand. Like this is the basic part. Basic okay. in the sense, if you don't know the commands, then you can't use which text box to fill what value, right? Because there will be a constraint concept constraints like primary key will be there unique queue not null so without knowing this concept can you use them no right no obviously so yeah. these concepts will be known in SQL itself and where whatever the text box are there to modify you can do it directly means the command you are not writing, it's generated automatically, but the concept awareness is required. Without that, we can't use it. Clear? Okay. Okay. Right. Any other doubts? Any of you? No. Fine. So, 